Welcome to worship at Good Shepherd in Moorhead, Minnesota. We are thankful that you are joining us today. And now let's have our first song. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong gather together, we invite you to bring your whole self before God. Today in our message, we're going to talk about anticipointment, where we anticipate something and then we're disappointed in it. One thing we will never be disappointed in is the forgiveness and the renewal that we get in our relationship with Jesus. So let's take a moment of silence now to think about those things that we need to be forgiven from, from our Lord. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are made new. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for meeting us in this place. And we acknowledge that there are things that are hard in this life, that we face disappointments and we face challenges. But you are never disappointing. What you offer to us in your forgiveness, in your strength, in your mercy, these things do not disappoint. Help us to put our hopes in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In John chapter 6, Jesus says some things to his disciples that lead to their anticipointment. In John 6, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. 
So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So I have a confession to make. I haven't seen Barbenheimer, the movie mashup of Barbie and Oppenheimer. So far from the reviews I have read and the people I've talked to, Barbenheimer has met the expectations of moviegoers. It has not led to anticipation. Another great mashup of two words, anticipation and disappointment. Anticipation is when you have high expectations about something and great anticipation, and then it fails to meet your expectations, and it leads to disappointment. I don't want to get stuck on Barbenheimer, but I want to reflect on anticipation. Have you ever been looking forward to something, and then you ended up disappointed? I have done this with family vacations. I've had a picture in my head of all the things that we will see and do, and when plans change, I experience anticipation. A life hack that I have discovered is to leave room on family vacations for serendipity. We don't overschedule things, and when plans change, we look at it as an adventure rather than a disaster. There's a lot of anticipation in life. Anticipation is connected to modern life and maybe having a certain level of wealth because we can afford to customize our lifestyle and our products. And then we start to expect to have everything always turn out exactly as we plan it. And we start to believe that we have more control over life than we actually do. Many of us place high expectations for ourselves and others in how perfectly everything should turn out. We want the perfect appearance, perfect marriage, perfect family, perfect home, perfect job, perfectly curated social media presence, and perfectly orchestrated life events. Think about the events like marriage proposals, prom proposals, weddings, birth announcements, and gender reveals that must be creative, well-executed, and well-documented online. This pursuit of perfection leaves us in a perpetual state of anticipation, and it stunts our ability to deal with the messiness of a real life. Marriage therapist Dr. John Gottman talks about having a good enough marriage. He says that people bristle at this term and they miss the meaning of good enough. They think that good enough means having no expectations and settling for being abused or treated poorly. He says that good enough means that you learn to deal with differences and conflict that happen just by having two people share life together and that you focus on the fine qualities of your partner rather than get resentful about the qualities they lack. He says that trust, commitment, affection, and respect are foundational in a good enough marriage. These are all things that need to be built over time after the initial falling in love stage ends. Building trust and commitment helps couples find shared meaning and purpose. The goal of a good enough marriage isn't perfection, but connection. Connection over perfection. There are realistic ups and downs in marriage rather than perpetual anticipation in a good enough marriage. Anticipation can happen in relationships, but it can also happen in faith. Have you ever experienced anticipation in your faith? Maybe you thought something you prayed for would happen and it didn't. Maybe you thought that because you have a strong faith in God, that things would turn out better or easier than they did. Or like in John chapter six, Jesus's followers are disappointed because Jesus isn't who they wanted him to be. 
Jesus started out as a small time rabbi, a small town rabbi, who says things that grab people's attention. And he calls 12 disciples to learn from him. These disciples and all the other people who started to follow him loved how provocative he was. Jesus' followers thought that Jesus was going to lead a movement that would overthrow the Roman government and improve the status of his people. His 12 followers who were closest to him came to know Jesus' heart. They saw how he cared for people, healed people, comforted people. They saw him do miracles. They came to learn that he was more than a rabbi, but the son of God. But then they learned that Jesus' plan didn't include overthrowing the Roman government. His plan included submitting to a humiliating death on the cross. Talk about anticipation. They anticipated earthly power and conquest, but Jesus said, I'm headed to the cross. Who's with me? And on the way to the cross, Jesus talks about what a meaningful life looks like. He talks about giving people the bread of life that sustains them forever. And then he said that the bread he was giving for the life of the world is his flesh. People are weirded out by this. What did he mean? The part of John chapter 6 that I shared with you was after Jesus offered his flesh and blood to all people. And it says that after this, many of his followers turned back and they no longer went about with him. And he asked his 12 disciples, do you also wish to go away? Peter says the most honest and disappointed and hope-filled phrase. Lord, to whom can we go? In other words, this is not what I signed up for. If I knew of someone better to follow, I would. He was disappointed that Jesus wasn't going to overthrow a government, but he learned that Jesus was who he said he was all along. Then Peter says, you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter must face his disappointment so that he can accept Jesus as he really is. Jesus crushes Peter's expectations in order to give Peter something better, meaning and purpose and living as a child of God. It is a better path, but not an easier path. You see, Jesus was and is about connection, not perfection. When he offers his flesh and blood, it isn't to gross us out but it's inviting us and his earliest disciples to dwell with him. Jesus is willing to talk about the messiness of dwelling with one another, abiding in the life that he offers. And Jesus uses words that get our attention. He says, I am the bread of life. I'm offering myself to you. Jesus' true mission takes our focus off the comforts and customizable life that we can get obsessed with. All the perfection we seek in spouses and homes and jobs, life events, those things that keep us trapped looking at our own needs and will eventually disappoint. No one can have awesomeness and perfection all the time. What Jesus offers us is purpose and meaning. Jesus offers connection over perfection. And that gets us to see the ultimate rather than just the immediate. In life, our expectations are often too high and no one can reach them. But when it comes to faith, our expectations are often too low. I wonder what two word mashup describes this when you expect something from faith, but what you get is even better. It's the opposite of anticipation. And if you come up with that two word mashup, let me know. Because when it comes to Jesus, we always receive more than we could ever expect. Amen. As we continue our time of worship, 
Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. And how precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. In my chains are gone, and I set free and my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised is good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains my chains are gone and I've been set free and my my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains, and my chains are gone, and I've been set free, and my God, my Savior, has ransomed shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but god who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever We want to thank you for being a part of this worshiping community where together we are encountering Jesus. And we also invite your participation. We love to have you participate in all the things that we do here, but that also requires resources. It is all of our resources together that can fuel the things that we do in this building for worship and education and knowledge of Jesus. But your resources shared in with this church also help us reach out beyond the walls of this community to reach people who are in need of very basic things like housing and food and someone to share that they care about them. So thank you for being a part of Giving to Good Shepherd. 
Everything that we gather together matters. We've got some great ways to connect as we get into the second half of summer. So we want you to check out all of these things that we're listing on the screen. And if you live in the area, please invite your friends, your families, your neighbors. We would love to have you participate in the ways that we gather, grow, and go. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.